We are all well acquainted with bias in the media, though sometimes it is not as obvious as we'd like to think. When we think of examples of bias, we tend to think of straightforward or explicit indications of favor towards a party or ideology. We are able to read and see this bias or favor in a transcript and understand exactly what the author or speaker thinks. We call this explicit bias. What we often don't consider is the counterpart of explicit bias, which is implicit bias. Implicit bias can be much more difficult to detect since it is an explicit. Implicit bias cannot be detected by just looking at a sentence. It is far more contextual and requires an understanding of what isn't being written on the page. It is important to note that for the purpose of this video, we are referring to implicit bias in a strict media environment. In other words, we are not discussing unconscious bias against social minorities. The most obvious form of implicit bias is the omission of contradictory viewpoints. If the author of an article only features quotations from politicians of one political party, you are prevented from seeing what the other party is saying. This can easily lead the reader to adopt a certain set of beliefs about a given issue. There is only so much time in the day to research how each political party feels about a given story, and finding different articles on your own can be challenging. Using Biasly's media source ratings, we will look at examples of implicit and explicit bias. We will start with explicit bias since it is often much easier to spot in this Fox News article. Markowicz's opinion piece offers many examples of bias. This is to be expected from an opinion piece as the purpose is to articulate an argument and not report on current events. Let's take the opening statement from the article as an example of explicit bias. America is experiencing inflation, gas prices are some of the highest in US history, and the Biden administration is planning a money transfer to the richest segment of the American population. This bias is explicit because it is directly criticizing the Biden administration's priorities. You can determine the author's bias purely based on the words being written. The key point is that the author disagrees with Biden's decision to deal with student loans given current economic circumstances. For an example of implicit bias, let's look at the following Denver Channel article detailing how Biden's student debt cancellation will affect Colorado residents. Although the author does a good job of restraining his language to single impartiality, they present many quotes from experts that affirm the belief that this student loan cancellation is positive. Here are two examples featured in the article. Of the ones left over, a little bit less than a third of the amount they owe would be left over on average, said Jacob Channel, senior economist at Student Loan Hero. So in that regard, I think that the economic impact is frankly kind of hard to overstate. For those students or families that still owe student loans, the forgiveness of loans, even up to $10,000, will be very significant, Silver said. The author chooses to include the second part of Silver's statement in the following quote. On the other hand, there's a lot of Americans and American families that have paid back their loans, that have been paying back their loans for years. They probably don't see this as being very fair. This single counter viewpoint provides a negative spin to the multiple positive accounts made throughout the article. However, there are many articles that don't contain any counterpoints whatsoever, making them more implicitly biased than what we find in this article. Now for reference, let's look at an article that details both sides even more thoroughly to help differentiate it from implicit bias. This Reuters article would be considered free from implicit bias due to the equal presentation of conflicting opinions. Every statement that supports one side or the other in this article is a quote from a politician, organization, branch of government, or researcher, leaving the author's opinion completely absent. Since opposing opinions are presented roughly as often as the other in this article, let's look at two examples illustrating how both sides are being portrayed. The first quote reads, I will never apologize for helping working Americans in middle class, especially not to the same folks who voted for a two trillion tax cut that mainly benefited the wealthiest Americans and the biggest corporations, Biden said referring to a Republican tax cut passed under former President Donald Trump. And the second quote reads, President Biden's student loan socialism is a slap in the face to every family who sacrificed to save for college, every graduate who paid their debt, and every American who chose a certain career path or volunteered to serve in our armed forces in order to avoid taking on debt, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell said Wednesday.
Had the author only shown quotes that support student loan forgiveness, then the article would be an example of implicit bias. Because both arguments are being presented in a reasonably impartial way, this article can be considered non-biased in its presentation. We hope this informational video helped illustrate the difference between explicit and implicit bias found in the media. We hope at the very least we have sparked insight as to how media outlets may attempt to shape your opinion without explicitly doing so. It can be difficult to find both sides of the story, especially when an author wants to cloak their real views in implicit bias. This is why Biasly conveniently gives you stories from conservative, moderate, and liberal viewpoints on our side-by-side -side news page. You can access the page by clicking the side-by-side -side button at the top right of our homepage.